studio. Uh, he's been playing some of the, the other clubs, and this is his first time playing like in front of fucking you guys. <laughs> Let's welcome Brian Horahan. Did you follow the money we're on? You did? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't for one reason and one reason only. The sport of curling. The reason behind this, I don't know, a lot of you might not know what that is. That's when you throw the coffee pot down the icy bowling alley. <laughs> and I don't know if you just noticed that, but I just executed a perfect curling toss. The reason I didn't watch it is because a man in my shape shouldn't be competing for a gold medal. <laughs> Pretty sure I can do that from my couch. <laughs> you know, the Olympics have just gone so far south on me, I don't even want to watch it anymore. The IOCC, the International Olympic Competition Committee, I got that out, nice. <laughs> that actually considering, and this is absolutely true, that they want um, pole dancing in the next Olympics. They're, um, they're actually looking into this. You know, so, they're winning me back. <laughs> and I started thinking about this. My mind went wild. And I'm like, can you imagine the announcer? You know, he's sitting there going, next up we have Candy Bottoms. <laughs> and they have to do the history of the athlete. She was molested at age 15. <laughs> How could this be a bad thing? And then it dawned on me that most sports in the Olympics actually have male and females for the same events. <laughs> and I don't have an injury because I blacked out after I thought of some kind of like this. <laughs> That's terrible. I just had a friend recently tell me that they had uh, cystic fibrosis. And I, I go, wait. That's, uh, I didn't know much about it, and I'm a very caring person. So what I did was I went online and I looked at a bunch of different medical websites to educate myself, because I'm a very caring human being. And the one thing that I noticed was on all four websites, it actually said that one of the early diagnoses they can actually do is the baby stays salty. It said this on all four websites. And I thought about that, and I'm like, was there some kind of a doctor meeting when they're all sitting there and they're like, you know, we really got to cure this early, we're not cure it, but you know, discover it on very early in the stages of the disease. How can we do this? An early diagnosis, we can, you know, help them out more. And then some odd doctor in the back of the room went, some of them babies taste salty. <laughs> it's an awkward moment. <laughs> and then I thought about it, and I'm like, wait a minute. So at some point, some doctor walked into a room and went, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, um, no need for a line. <laughs> but we want to run a quick test. <laughs> awkward moment number two. <laughs> And then I thought about it, and I was like, my God, what other diseases could possibly be diagnosed like this? That's not herpes. <laughs> or my favorite one. And if this was my job, I wouldn't take a vacation day. I wouldn't take a sick day. That's not breast cancer. <laughs> But then I was realistic about it, and I thought about it, and like, if a woman was really going to go and get diagnosed that way, it wouldn't be with me. It would be with a, you know, a more attractive male doctor. Ladies, thank you for not clapping, all right? <laughs> or it would be with a female doctor, so they'd feel more comfortable. Then I thought about it, and a very attractive female doctor. <laughs> I went from being a caring friend to a masturbation fantasy within two and a half minutes. <laughs> How many masturbations do we have out here tonight? <laughs> Come on, let me hear from you. You can clap for that. We all do it. I got into it with a couple of guys recently. We're going back and forth, you know? That's what I appreciate Cameron, because you guys are going to be on my side of this one. They were completely against it. Like, like, sick thing to do. And I'm like, no, it's a completely healthy and normal part of life, am I right? Yeah, absolutely. But according to mall security inside the <laughs> It's not what you think, actually. I was actually using the kitty claws actually to look over at Victoria's Secret. <laughs> it's just kind of weird when the pedophile in the thongs makes eye contact with it. <laughs> A lot of people think that 
with the, uh, the first date that you go on with a, with a woman. It's the most important date. It's the tone setter. You're going to realize if you're compatible or not. I don't believe that. I believe the first sleepover date was the most important date. Because you can't hide anything after that. If you have a weird boil or anything like that, you know, it's going to come out. I just had, you guys can clap for this, I just had one of my uh, first sleepover dates in a while recently. And uh, the problem was, is the next morning, I woke up, she woke up, and we'd been out all night, and my tummy started to rumble. It did, it was, it was bad. It was, I'm like, oh man, I'm, I'm getting gassy. <laughs> this isn't a good, this is our first sleepover. Day. This isn't gonna have, there's not gonna be a second date here. <laughs> and guys, pay attention to this. I can't even stress that enough. Because something occurred to me. I had listened to her on the date. I paid attention. She had told me the night before that she has no sense of smell. Right? <laughs> and I thought about it. I'm like, all right. I'm like, she has no sense of smell. Let's go for it. And then I kind of thought about it. And went, well, what if she just legally doesn't have a sense of smell? <laughs> you know, like someone that's legally blind, you know, she just can't smell enough where she can brag about it. <laughs> but I got the guts up, and I'm like, all right. I'm gonna try this, so I... And this was fueled by like 14 millilites and late night McDonald's. <laughs> she's got her head on my chest and she looked up. And she's like, I had so much fun last night. I'm like, oh, you really can't smell any of that. That's amazing. So I did it again. I'm, I'm feeling like a champ now. I'm getting away with murder. I jumped out of bed all excited. Went over to the window, getting ready to stop my day. And <laughs> which looked like the dumbest thing I've ever said to somebody. I turned around and looked at her and went, I forgot you're not deaf. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. My name is Brad.